Brown. We have the Cesar Chavez Learning Academy's Teacher Prep Academy. Give them some love, folks. My name is Alex. I'm Julie. I'm Martin. I'm Adriana. I'm Jocelyn. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Destiny. And I'm Joe. OK. So why are we here? Why exactly are we doing this? That's what we constantly kept asking ourselves throughout this entire Aspen Challenge. We saw that health was a major problem, not just in our community, but throughout the entire nation. We wanted to start globally, but we knew we can proceed that so quickly, so we started locally. Um, so let me ask you a question. Why is it easier to choose unhealthier foods over a healthy snack, for example? Exactly, right? It's more convenient, it's cheaper, and you don't have to think about it. But do you know the effects of choosing unhealthier foods over time? It can cause laziness, heart disease, and even stomach failure. Wait, what does that all mean? Well, if you continue to choose unhealthy foods such as hot Cheetos, other than fruits, you will begin to, over time to feel that you're more lazier, depressed, and even just unsatisfied with life. So, is that worth it? I don't think so. So if you choose healthier foods such as fruits, oranges, and stuff like that, then over time you will feel that you're, you, you'll be more energized, your immune system will be boosted, and you have stronger mental faculties. Wow, doesn't that sound great? <laughs> now, once we decided that, once we found out why we were doing this, we had a purpose, and then we had a conviction. And so we decided, let's grab this and let's run with it. No, let's soar with this. We are the Soar for Health organization. Start the video, please. <laughs> represent Cesar Chavez Learning Academies in the city of San Fernando. Every great organization um, informs their public about why, what their purpose is and why they're here. Um, Penny Lane has one, Kaiser Permanente has one, and we have our own. So what is the challenge? We have accepted Alex Ortega's challenge, was, which was to identify an important public health issue that affects the community and to change our peers' knowledge, attitudes, and behaviors towards the problem so that we can create a healthier, happier, and more united community. Okay, why? We believe that this was important in our community because 17% of adults in our community are obese, uh, according to 2010 um, surveys. So in 2013, we checked the surveys, and that percent went up by 4%. Another reason we chose Alex Ortega's challenge was because the cases of diabetes in the regions is the seventh leading cause of death. This rose by 10% within a single year. According to the CDC, obesity, heart disease, cholesterol, and high blood pressure are more prevalent in Hispanic, African American, and Caucasian cultures. When our team saw these numbers, we knew the issue became very obvious. We knew we had to take charge of the situation and help fix our community. We hoped that facing this issue would help implement the healthier ways of living and make our community a big part of the health movement. 
Our health teacher, also the workshop instructor for our first event, said to us that being able to be part of this SOAR team is the highlight of his career. He also said that it's, it's teams like us that want to make a difference in our community um, made him want to be an educator. We're all looking for something to motivate us. And I believe, well, we all believe, believe that people are more willing to seek for change if they know that they're not doing it alone. Every journey begins somewhere, and we're starting ours right here. And we want to let our community know that we're going to stand hand in hand with them throughout the way. Thank you. Cesar Chavez Learning Academy's Teacher Prep Academy. <laughs> Under the leadership of Principal Elizabeth Beltran. At this time, we'll go right into our three minute question and answers. Judges? At the end of the your presentation, you had the names of a set of schools and businesses. Can you talk a little bit about what you have done or are doing with them? Okay, since we didn't have time, this is basically the recap. Okay, um, what's different about our health approach to this um, challenge is that basically we're wanting to do events. Basically, we want to start off small and end up, end up at a big health fair. So we recently had our first um, gathering of health and we're actually having another one, April 26th, in the city of San Fernando. And then our big health fair is going to be held in July, July 5th, I believe. Um, we have partnerships with the city of San Fernando. So we have connections with Kaiser Permanente and all the hospitals and the businesses that you saw up there and the schools because we're basically reaching out to the high schools and middle schools so they bring their parents along. Because we decided to choose um, ages of all ages, that way they can, um, I know, I don't know. Since we're a community, we just want to approach everyone and not just one specific age group because health is for everyone, not just for little kids or big kids. So that's pretty much it. I need a little more specificity about the things that you actually did. I get a great sense of your, com your compassion and your commitment and for this cause, but I'd love to know a little bit more about what you actually did during the seven week challenge. Okay, so during the seven week challenge, we took um, time to do meetings and during those meetings, we contemplated on the series of events we would be hosting. Uh, we have created a partnership with the city of San Fernando and in the future, they will be allowing us to use their facilities, their parks, um, and they're looking to give us grants. So after the grant that you gave us, we will extend the, the money and that will help us better our movement. Um, the series of events, it's, it's, a, it's a compelling thing. A lot of adults came out the first event we had and uh, they had a lot of fun. The children did too. It's, it's, it's gonna be a big thing, I think, yeah. When you talk about uh, measuring the outcome, I hear about events, and events are always good. They get people you know, fired up and ready to go and all that. How are you going to measure the impact uh, and measure your success? Um, we, we do before and after surveys. So we did the before of what the community thought the biggest issue was, and 50% of them thought it was health, that we are not healthy, that health has been a fading sort of subject in our community and they would love to see that brought back. So we did that and the after survey, we're in the process of taking that. So the, the children, the adults that attended our first event will be sent a survey in the mail um, thanks to the city of San Fernando. Yeah. In terms of sustainability, have you thought about that, how the project will be sustained? Um, we plan on having winter walks, summer hikes, so we want to keep it sustainable, just not so it's just events, because events could get boring after a while, so we're trying to do like physical activities since we have the partnership with the city of San Fernando. Thank you, Cesar Chavez Learning Academies, Teacher Prep Academy. Thank you so very much. Okay. This morning, you've had the opportunity to listen to 17 high school teams answering the challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give all of our teams a round of applause. It is amazing what can be done in the amount of time that the young folks had to do this. And I want to also thank all their principals and all their sponsors and all the folks working with the young folks. Give them a hand as well, please.
Now, before I dismiss us for lunch and all, and I want to give you all the itinerary for the next couple of hours. First, you will have an opportunity to text and vote. Remember I said earlier you will have to vote for three teams. So let me make sure you're clear. If you want to be a, a, an aggressive person and vote for your team all three times, it will only count one time, and that's be it. <laughs> we figured that out. <laughs> so you're going to vote for three teams. The voting you will text to A C L A, and then you have a text number for each team. And the number you would text it to is 77948. If you decide to vote for each team, this is the number for each team. Eagle Rock High School, ACLA.1. LACES, ACLA.2. Ulysses S. Grant High School, ACLA.3. Abraham Lincoln High School, Oh, forgive me. Let me back up. I give, go to the number three again. That is Rancho Dominguez Preparatory High School, ACLA.3. Make sure you're clear. Ulysses S. Grant is ACLA.4. Abraham Lincoln, ACLA.5. Harbor Teacher Prep, dot six. Reseda High School, dot seven. Dorsey High School, dot eight. Fauché Learning Center, dot nine. Arlita High School, dot ten. Daniel Pearl High School, dot eleven. Maya Angelo Community High School, dot twelve. Mervyn Diamondly, dot thirteen. King Drew Magnet High School, dot fourteen. Valley Academy of Arts and Sciences. Yeah. Dot 15. Yeah. Chadsworth Charter High School. Yeah. Dot 16. And Teacher Prep Academy from Cesar Chavez Learning Academy. Dot 17. Remember, your call in number is 77948. That's where you would text ACLA dot whatever number you choose. One more time, I'm sorry. Okay, if we have this list of the Daredevils up on the screen, folks, just in case you did not get it, each one of the teams, and you're concerned about the ACLA on the end. When you get out to your table, there are handouts on your table, so if you can't see it here, with all the numbers, they're out on your tables also, so you have no problem being able to text. Now, let me make you clear. We will close off the texting at 1.30. At 1.31 when you text, it will not be recorded. It will all cut off at 1.30. Now, for the next hour, you will enjoy, you will refuel yourself with lunch that will be served outside. And during that one hour, you will have an opportunity to modify your displays inside of the library. Only during that time can you do the modification because the following hour from 125 to 250, our judges will be spending only five minutes at each station inside the library where each team will be with their displays. Following that, you'll have an opportunity for, like we always do, the good times, our ice cream break outside before we come back to the Coconut Grove for our final awards presentations. I see one hand for questions in the back. If you could be nice and loud, I'll, be, I'll try to answer it. I'll let one of my folks from uh, Aspen give me some information. There's, there's no charge. There is no charge for the text, folks. No charge for the text. Okay? And lastly, at 350 sharp, I will start the awards presentation. 
And before you come in, remember you have 10 minutes at the very end before that start to break down your displays and log them up and get into the room. Again, you have been a wonderful audience, a great, wonderful group of participants, great judges. Give our judges some hands, so they got work now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your lunch, modify your displays, prepare for the judges, and I'll see you back after lunch and after displays and after your ice cream. Hey, Chief, how you doing?